Collaborating with other content creators is such an important part to being a YouTuber. And throughout my YouTube career, I've had the opportunity to collaborate with some of the best content creators on this platform. What's up everybody, it's Grim, and in today's video, I'm gonna rate the experiences of all of these amazing YouTubers that I've gotten to work with. Please like this video, subscribe, tap the bell, turn on the notifications so you never miss an upload, and leave your comments below about what you think is the best story that I've told in this video. So I wanna get right into it, and I wanna talk about my favorite YouTuber that I work with. No, it's not my brother. <laughs> no, um, it is Michael Green, AKA Kid Behind a Camera. And we became friends through wrestling and action figures and all that kind of stuff. And we got to work together so many times. I got to go first, I got to meet him at the Royal Rumble. But then we got front row seats. Me and Michael got to sit together at NXT Brooklyn, front and center. Oh my God, what a feeling that was. So not only be front and center on a WWE pay-per-view, but be with like, like a guy that I'm a fan of. Like, you know, I was a fan and now we're friends. I'm like, this is so exciting. And one of the great things about working with Michael is he teaches me things. Like, you know, obviously you see on my channel and you see his influence on my channel because he's taught me so much. And when you work with YouTubers, sometimes they don't, you realize, wow, this guy's got millions of views and he doesn't know what he's doing. But meanwhile, keep behind the camera, he knows exactly what he's doing. He is so smart when it comes to YouTube and making content. And it's just such a joy to work with him and absorb that knowledge and say, wow, he's not just some fat kid from a trailer in South Carolina. This man's an actual businessman. He's very intelligent, he has very high IQ, and he teaches me all kinds of cool stuff. And he's enhanced my life. So I appreciate the hell out of that. So my experience working with Michael, five asses up, five huge asses up. And, and, and so should I talk about my brother? Yes, my brother Duhop is a YouTuber, but he's only a YouTuber because of me. What's it like working with my brother? Well, he's a butt crack and we fight sometimes. Oh, here's me and my brother, we fight all the time, you know? And it's like, oh, are we not gonna make videos anymore? Or are we gonna fight each other on the videos? And that's just what we do, because we're brothers. You fight with your siblings, we all fight with our siblings. <laughs> so what's it like working with my brother? He's a pain in my ass. He's annoying. <laughs> he, but at the same time, like, he has good ideas. And, and, and he did say something on GTS Wrestling last week, and it kind of pissed me off, but he's kind of right. Every once in a while, like Grim, What's gonna happen on the show tonight? What's gonna happen on GTS Wrestling tonight? And I just, I don't know, do up, you got an idea? <laughs> Sometimes I just draw a blank, man. It's hard coming up with constant creative ideas multiple times a week for a wrestling show. So yeah, sometimes I look at him and say, yo, you got an idea? I don't know. And he comes up with something and it's good. And I'm like, hell yeah. So when you think that I write everything, yeah, yeah, do hot helps. <laughs> What's it like working with my brother? Two asses up deducting off three asses because the bastard fights with me all the time and he's stubborn as a mule. <laughs> okay, moving on. I know you, I mentioned him earlier, Boogie2988, and, and he's one of my favorite people. I do love Boogie, but we all see in his content and the way he makes content, he's a little bit of a nightmare. And that makes it a little bit difficult to communicate with him sometimes. And... At first, I had a great experience working with Boogie. The only time I ever really worked with him was at that McJuggernuggets party. And I handed him the camera and said, keep filming. And he did. So Boogie, you get five asses up for that because you did exactly what I asked you to do. When it comes to work, that's it. He did what he asked him. Working with Boogie was phenomenal. But, like, personal relationships and like trying to do more work with them, whatever, like, like when, when Keemstar and McJuggernuggets and Emily Saxon and Kid Behind the Camera, we were all breaking down this party on Keemstar's podcast. Like I felt like Boogie was going to be like on my side because Jesse was a piece of garbage to both of us. But Boogie was like, no, it was all Grim. Grim's garbage. It was all Grim's fault. I did nothing wrong. And I was like, Bugs, Bugs, I had your back this whole time saying you did nothing wrong because he really didn't. Well, you could have said, hey, I didn't do anything wrong either. I was just hanging out with girls at a party. Was I being a piece of garbage? I didn't think I was. No, I could have said, hey, you know, me and Grim were just hanging with the girls. We weren't doing anything wrong. But he's like, no, it was all Grim. It was all Grim. I was like, Boogie, Boogie, no. But it's okay. It's Boogie. We all know how he is. And I love him. So, so Boogie, I'm going to give you a pass. Wearing with you was phenomenal. You filmed what you were supposed to film. We got great footage out of it. So I appreciate the hell out of that bookster. Which then brings me to 
Jesse. McJugger Nuggets. Ugh. And again, how much have I worked with Jesse? Well, I had a little bit more of a rapport with Jesse because I had started the whole story fire thing with him. And I kind of talked about this in a previous video, and so I'll go through it quickly. But basically, I was invited to be on Jesse's new platform, Story Fire, which was supposed to be a rival to YouTube. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be fantastic because finally we can monetize content we can't monetize on YouTube. And Jesse, Kid Behind the Camera, Keemstar, these were like the forefront of content creators who were making fine content that should not be restricted in any way. And it's all getting restricted just because of yelling and cursing. So I'm like, sure, I will hop on this platform because my wrestling is also we curse and we yell and we... It's violent sometimes, so yeah, I'm going to get on this story fire. And working with him at first as a business guy was okay. But then I got invited to his party, and that's where he turned to be a complete jerk. Because, so how do you work with another big YouTuber, which at the time I was still doing massive views. I still was over a million subscribers. Like, I'm a big YouTuber, man. I'm, I'm royalty here. Like, I'm not, I got, got no 3,000 subs. How do you invite a YouTuber like me to your house for video, because he was making a whole Lord of the Rings type storyline, never mentioned it to me once. I thought, from a text message he sent me, that we were having a drunken rager party and cameras will be rolling of the party. So I wanted to be the craziest party animal there. That's what I showed up as. So, and then Jesse throws me out of his house for partying too hard. And we covered that in a whole video and it's a whole long thing, which I'm not getting into. Go check out that video. But how do you throw out a YouTuber like Boogie2988? Because Boogie got thrown out moments later for filming the interaction with me. I was treated like garbage by this family. And I think that they're they're just five asses down. <laughs> you know, I don't want to sit here and just disparage people. But I do not like the way I was treated. And I don't recommend working with McJugger Nuggets. I would never collab with him or anyone associated with him like that. And and Kid Behind the Camera and Boogie and Emily and Keemstar, everybody's done with them. But yet we're all still friends, me and Keem and Boogie and Emily. So what does that kind of say? That Jesse was the piece of garbage, confirmed. This next YouTuber that I got to work with was huge and is probably the biggest YouTuber I've ever worked with. It's got even more subscribers than Kid Behind a Camera and Boogie2988, Brandon Rogers. But now here's the thing, Brandon Rogers is not in my genre at all, and probably a lot of you don't watch him, whereas a lot of you do watch Kid Behind a Camera and Boogie and Keem and all that kind of stuff. So you're like, well, Grim, why did you work with Brandon Rogers? It was completely impromptu. It was a total shoot. <laughs> so. Brandon Rogers is a very eccentric YouTuber, and he makes some of this craziest, chaotic, and funniest content that I've ever seen. It's very, very much gets age-restricted, demonetized, that kind of stuff. Much like me. But, you know who's a huge fan of Brandon Rogers? My wife, Tina. And when I met her, she was telling me about this YouTuber, and I had heard his name, and he does another show called Hell of a Boss, where he's a voice. And I had heard of him, but I never really watched his content until she showed it to me and I said, wow, this is hilarious. And I was really enjoying it. And she said, he's doing a live show. I would love to go see him. So as a gift, I bought the front row VIP package to go take Tina to see this YouTuber. While we're watching Brandon Rogers perform, he asks for a volunteer to come up on stage. And I was like, ooh me. <laughs> and of course, like, I just, I feel like there's a certain energy in this universe that certain creativities, creators, and, and, artists, we all kind of have, we all just kind of vibe with each other. And I just felt that Brandon was like, as soon as my hand went like this and I looked over, Brandon just instantly connected and said, that's the one, that's right there. Cause he looked around, he looked at me, he looked around the room and he came back to me and said, you. So I got called up on stage and we got a little wild. <laughs> and, and the video's on YouTube, you can go check it out. So I did this whole bit with Brandon Rogers where I had to give him a COVID shot, except I had to give it to him in the bum bum. And, uh, it looked a little bit uh, bisexual up there on stage. And everybody was like, God damn, Grim. And I was like, listen, comfortable with my sexuality. I can fool around and have fun with another content creator. And it doesn't mean anything. So I got up there. I had fun. I got to perform with Brandon Rogers. It was a complete shoot. That was complete improv. Nothing was scripted. Nothing was planned. But if you watch that skip back, you would be like, how? 
<laughs> it was so on point. And that's just like, I just feel like when, when two creatives bounce off each other, it's just a natural chemistry. And I just feel like I had such a natural chemistry bouncing off of another big, strong creative like Brandon Rogers. And it was a really, really great experience. And I would rate that five asses up as well. Guys, thanks so much for watching this video. And I know I worked with so many other YouTubers and I wanna talk about that too. And I will in the next video. So I need you to subscribe, tap the bell and turn on the notifications because I wanna get into the wrestling YouTubers that I've worked with. We're gonna talk about JD from NY. I wanna talk about Macho T. I wanna talk about wrestling with regret, Brian Zane, Daniel Cronin, and a host of others, DGDX. I was on Ryback's podcast. We're gonna rate all of those experiences the next time on this channel, so don't miss it. I thank you so much again for watching. Please like the video, leave a comment, subscribe for more, and if you're not down with that, we got three words for you. Eat it, yeah!